There is a passion for hunting something deeply implanted in the human breast. Charles Dickens, 1812 through 1870. That's the opening quote on the inside cover of Batman Noel, a new graphic novel that has just come out this year, and I believe was released sometime in October. Hello everyone, I'm Zazubar. Today I'm going to be reviewing that graphic novel, Batman Noel. Now, I gotta admit, I'm a pretty big Batman fan. And I try to get my hands on every new graphic novel and comic that comes out. Well, I was highly skeptical when I saw this first on my comic book shelf. I didn't like the premise. I thought it was silly and unnecessary. And I thought it had been done so many times, I didn't think it had to be done with the Dark Knight. But, upon reading it now, having read it in depth, I have come to a conclusion. This is one of the best Batman standalone graphic novels I've ever read. It's right up there with The Dark Knight Returns, Batman Long Halloween, and all the other big names in my opinion. You're free to disagree with me. Here's why. This isn't just a Batman A Christmas Carol. It's the story of Scrooge told without changing anything over a modern Batman story. And it's really, really fascinating. And it's kind of weird to see it go down like that. It's a little bit... I gotta admit, it was a little weird reading it and re referring to Batman as Scrooge, but it requires a lot more in-depth thinking than a lot of reading comic books does. Not to saying that, not saying that comic, reading comic books is being brain-dead, but what I'm saying is that it requires you to pay attention to both narratives that are going on. And there are two succinct narratives going on reading Batman Noel. The first is, of course, the tale the tale of um, A Christmas Carol. Unaltered, just over a modern-day Batman story, as I said. And that story unfolds in both the art and the little word, and the storybook, chil like children's book kind of... Um, text boxes on every page. Well, they're not really boxes, it's just really, really cool looking written in little um, prose paragraphs that tell the story of Scrooge. And they're being told by one of the characters that are in the story. And they're referring to Batman, but, you know, they call him Scrooge. And, um, that's the first narrative that's going on. And it, it's told through that and the art. Now, the other story, which is more like a modern-day Batman story that you could read in any comic, is one of Batman trying to bring the Joker back to Arkham, the usual situation. Now, what makes this, of course, different than other stories that have done the same thing is, of course, the Christmas Carol angle. And I love the choices they use for the, ghost, the ghosts of Christmas past, uh, present, and future. And, of course, um... The, the choice they have for the um, the spirit who visits him, telling him that he's going to be visited by three ghosts. Um, of course, the thing that this book is trying to say is that Batman and Scrooge are very similar. And it's Jason Todd who visits Batman as a spirit and tells him that he's going to be visited by three ghosts. Or it's not really Jason Todd. The Robin costume is in the Batcave, and it just kind of comes to life, and it's awesome. And Jason Todd tells him he's going to be visited by three ghosts. Let's meet those three ghosts now. In order, Catwoman is the ghost of Christmas past. I'll get into my feelings on these in a second. Superman is the ghost of Christmas present. And the Joker is the ghost of Christmas future. Ghost. Of, let's start with the beginning. Ghost of Christmas past, Catwoman. At first, I didn't think that made sense at all. But then... Reading the, the caption boxes and then watching the battle unfold between Batman and Catwoman in the story, it made a lot of sense. The whole point was that Batman has changed in his style of crime fighting and just being a superhero. Catwoman is sad because of this. She remembers back when he, when he had just been starting out and they would chase each other across the rooftops of Gotham and play a game of cat and mouse as she puts it. And she tries to kiss him, and he just nudges her away. Because he thinks that she's going to give him information about where the Joker is. She's not. She just wanted to get his attention, because he won't chase her anymore. It's really, really sad. And really, really tragic. And I love it. 
Catwoman is really well written here. She comes off as a little bit of a lost kind of crushy schoolgirl school to me. But it adds a lot of depth to Batman, so I don't really mind it. That was a really good choice. Um, especially when we see flashbacks of how they, how they did used to interact. And we get to see a nostalgic looking Batman costume. And then we see him back as his rugged looking self in the current day costume. By the way, I guess I should... Since I, since I brought it up, I might as well talk about the Batman costume in this. I really didn't like it when I first saw it. It looked really weird. Um, it reminded me kind of like the Dark Knight costume, except it is gray and black, like um, the current comics. But um, then I, I thought it might have just been like a wintry kind of costume, since it's Christmas Eve and all. But that didn't really seem to be the case either, since it looked like he was wearing it year-round. But... I kind of got the point of it. It's sharper looking. He looks a little bit more like a monster. And I guess that's the point, that that's how he's changed. And then, then of course, we get to see that nostalgic looking, um, color, uh, more colorful Batman costume that we saw in, like, the 80s. The blue and yellow and black costume. Even though it's just pretty much yellow, black, and gray here. Um, but we do get to see it, and it is really cool looking. Also... I really love the Robin costume that they have in this. Now, I'll get into Robin in the, at the end of this review, because he's probably the catalyst for this whole story. Or not probably, he is the catalyst for this whole story. And, um, the Robin costume is actually really cool. It reminds me of the one they use in Brave and the Bold. Um, the, the, the TV show, I mean. Um, in that the pants are yellow because they didn't want to give Robin a Speedo. And that makes a lot of sense. Um... And I really like the scale kind of armory look to it, that they're not trying to portray Robin as a kid here. They're trying to portray him as Ro as Batman's partner. Um, and I'll get, and uh, of course, this is the Jason Todd Robin. This is the one, you know, Jason Todd was killed by the Joker. And um, they don't call him by name, and I love that. It's kind of like implied that it's Jason Todd. You know, because of course he's dead. Um, and there's this really cool image where we see the three, the two Batman costumes, like the one that he used to wear and the one that he wears now, next to the Robin costume, Jason Todd's Robin costume. It's really cool. Um, and it just, it really shows Batman's progression and the degeneration of his emotions. That now he is just this cold, hard monster who's just going out in the night and fighting crime. Um... So, that's... I just got completely off track. Uh, so that's The Ghost of Christmas Past with Catwoman. Um, really think she's a good choice upon reading it. Now, on to Superman, The Ghost of Christmas Present. I originally thought, isn't Superman the man of tomorrow? Why wouldn't he be the ghost of Christmas future? But then, you know, of course, remembering the Dickens novel, and remembering that The Ghost of Christmas Present was described as this jolly, colorful-looking man, you know, kind of like Santa... Then it fit. Um, Superman is really well written in this. Um, of course, I'm also a big Superman fan, also being a Batman fan, and I couldn't get enough of him in this story. Um, he really is just there to wake Batman up and um, just get him out of this deranged, not really deranged, kind of emotionless, dark cycle he's in. And I really love the, the, um, the illusions that Batman's going to die soon. Um, he is hacking and coughing the whole book. Um, he apparently has a really bad pneumonia. And, uh, Superman tries to tell him that he needs to go see a doctor the whole time. But Batman refuses. And Superman spends his time in the novel flying Batman around Gotham, trying to show him, or remind him, what he's fighting for. Because it seems that Bruce has forgotten why he became Batman. Um, you know, because of his parents' death, but also to help people. Breaking Batman down to bare bones, he is a superhero. And Batman has kind of forgotten that that's what his job is, to protect people. And then if he forgets that, he's just another one of the crazies. And there's a, a scene that's brought up with that, with, um, with Gordon, which is a really cool scene. Um, with, and of course, that is with the Ghost of Christmas Presents, so I really like it. Which is Superman. Uh, interesting thing about the Superman costume, I thought I was going to see the, you know, modern one. 
the one that's the armor without the underwear, but we get the classical Superman costume here, which leads me to believe that this cost that this book was probably written before the reboot, and that's why Superman's costume looks pretty much unaltered. Um. Otherwise, the Superman is really well, really well written in this. Uh, really, really got a kick out of seeing him here. Now, on to probably the most unusual, Joker as the ghost of Christmas future. That makes a lot of sense. Um, really nice touch on the on the uh, Lieber Mayo's part. Lieber Mayo wrote this. Joker doesn't have any dialogue. Um, while he's supposed to be the ghost of Christmas future. After after the story, um, after the Christmas Carol story is kind of concluded, and it's just the, the conclusion of the Batman story, he does have dialogue. But before that, all that happens is I won't spoil it, but it's really cool. He just does exactly what the Ghost of Christmas uh, Future does. He shows Batman how he's gonna die, and I won't say anything more about it. Um, it's really uncanny, really cool. It's a really well written scene. And I guess I better talk about the art now that I'm, I was just about to bring it up. The art in this is amazing. It is beautifully drawn. Um, it's really dark. It's kind of like every page is a well-written painting or uh, well-drawn painting. Something you might see in a museum. It's un astounding. I My jaw dropped every single page. Um... Uh, probably the biggest, most, like, nostalgic moment for me was just seeing Jason Todd and Bruce jumping off buildings together as Batman and Robin, and it's really cool to see that. And, it's, again, it's beautifully drawn. Um, I believe Lee Bermejo also wrote, both wrote and drew the book. Well, I know he drew it. I didn't know, if, I don't know if he wrote the whole thing. But it's a really, really well-drawn story. Um, and... What else should I talk about? Not really much that I can't, I can't like, I don't want to spoil. I would say you would have to be a Batman fan to read this. I don't think you could get away with just being, just having a passing familiar, familiar, familiarity with Batman and reading this. I know there's going to be some people who disagree with me on that, but I really think that that's the case here. There's a lot of references to past Batman stories and events. Of course, Jason Todd isn't named, and he, the fact of how he died isn't explained, and you kind of have to know that. And if, um, if you don't, you're going to kind of be lost. And I really think that those who don't like this story are going to be the ones who aren't Batman fans. Um, if you are a Batman fan, though, if you don't read this, it would be a criminal act and Batman would have to punish you for that. You would just be one of, to quote Batman from the story, one of the surplus criminal population. Guys, you, you got to read this story if you're a Batman fan. And that's, what, that's who this review is for. It's beautifully drawn, beautifully written, and the parallels between Batman and Scrooge are uncanny and fascinating. Highly recommend this. Um, it's kind of expensive, but of course remember, folks, it is a hardcover graphic novel. Its expense is well worth the beautifully drawn and beautifully put together book that this is. Uh, it's $22.99. In US dollars and I highly recommend it it's well worth that amount I got it for my birthday so I was lucky um but even if I would have more than happily spent money on this this is a beautiful story highly recommend it I plan to read it over and over again I'm gonna give it a five out of five can't I can't give it anything lower than that Zazubar out